بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفاه وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفاه خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الانبياء وعلى اله الاسكيا واصحابه الاتقياء اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا توبوا الى الله توبه نصحا وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من لزم الاستغفار جعل الله له من كل هم فرجا ومن كل ضيق مخرجا ورزقه من حيث لا يحتسب في شرين بوكي امام غزالي رحمه الله عليه احياء علوم الدين ان لاست ويك وي ستارتد ذا لاست كوارتر اوف امام غزالي رحمه الله عليه بوك ان يو منشن هاي امام غزالي رحمه الله عليه هاز ديفايدد ذا بوك ان فور كوارترز ذا فيرست كوارتر از كوارتر اوف العبادات ذا كوارتر اوف ام اكس اوف ورشيب ذا سكند از ربو العادات the with the quarter which regards to the daily things that we do marriage buying and selling things that a person does throughout his life and then the third quarter was rubu the fourth the third quarter was rubu al-muhlikat the quarter of those things that destroy a person and the last quarter is rubu al-munjiyat those things that save a person so in the previous year we've been discussing things that destroy a person and how we have been destroyed um due to the due, due to the deeds that we do throughout our to throughout our life so now it comes to the point that how do we make this turn in our life and how do we correct the mistakes that we've made so imam ghazali rahmatullahi for this the last quarter he has set rubu al munjiyat the quarter for those things uh, which free a person from the fire of hell and free a person from the anger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the reason why imam ghazali rahmatullahi has put this last quarter in his book and i set it a part of his book is so that we learn the pathway to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with this we finish off our book with this Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi he finishes off the book so out of there in the last quarter the first thing Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi has mentioned is kitab at-tawbah that the first thing in the last quarter Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi makes a mention of is the book with regards to repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala see when a person commits a sin he calls on to himself for pressure cuz comes in the hadith of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that when a person commits a sin a black dot comes up, a black dot comes onto his heart and then when he commits another sin another black dot comes onto his heart and then when he commits another sin another black dot comes onto his heart and so what happens is that now his heart is 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 covered in coated in this darkness in the dhulm the dhulma this darkness so now because his heart is coated in this darkness he begins to feel depression because a person feels joy and happiness from unsiyah from being close to someone and the joy that we feel is being is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but now that his heart is quoted in this darkness it's very hard for him to 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 basically directly enjoy the worship that he could have that, could, that he could have enjoyed with a pure heart so what happens now he feels himself distancing away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with his dark heart and he's distancing away he's dis- distancing away until now he feels alone he feels that he's left alone in the world and there's no one there to help him and he falls into this into, into this into, into this uh, mode of depression So this depression this nadama if you can say it stays with the person in this world and in the hereafter. Now on the other hand a person who does good deeds every good deed brings a light to the heart. Every good deed brings a light to the heart. And this light helps him build a connection with Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the one who does good deeds the end product is he's a happy person. This person 10 years after his life 20 years after his life when this person's passing away you can look at the scholars across the world anywhere you can look at Egypt you can look at Africa India Pakistan the great scholars of the world they may be 80 years old but they're extremely happy enjoying their life with the way they're living they have no regret over their life on the other hand we have the 80 year old father father of ours or grandfather of ours who regrets every moment of his life he feels a life of depression many of us go through this phase so sins bring a dep- bring sadness on a person and bring a person into the mode of depression and good deeds that take a person close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the light into the heart give contentment to the person Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions this in the 14th juz of the Quran man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha wa huwa mu'min man amila salihan whoever does a good deed min dhakarin aw untha whether it be male or female wa huwa mu'min and he is a, and he is a believer whoever whichever believer male or female does a good deed fala nuhyiyannahu hayatan tayyiban we will give him a life of contentment and peace This is the ilan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the announcement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, we must always remember this, that sins bring darkness to the heart. Because when, when we remember this, that sins bring darkness to the heart and take us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will lead us to a, 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 a room of depression, then what will happen is we will leave these sins. And then we have to keep in our mind that good deeds will take us close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it will always keep us happy. 
See, for example, if a person sits, you know, and wastes half his, one hour of his gambling. And on the other hand, we have a person who's reading one hour reading the Quran. So probably at the moment, at the time, the guy who's gambling, he may enjoy himself more. And the person who's reading the Quran, he may not enjoy himself as much. But the end product is when they both look back at the previous hour, the one who read the Quran is gonna feel way more happy because for every single letter he recited, he got ten rewards. The Prophet says, Do not think Alif Lam Mim is one word, one letter. Alif al Harfun, Alif is one letter, for that you get ten rewards. And then Lam is one harf, for that you get ten rewards. And then Mim is one harf, you get for that you get ten rewards. So this person in one hour, how much ever Quran he recited for each letter he recited, he gained a reward and he gained closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, what happens is when we sin, we take the sins very light. Whenever we sin, we always take sins very light. We think first, is it a small sin, is it a big sin? Our scholars would always describe sins as a flame of light, a flame, a flame of fire. Now, the fire, whether it's small or great, small or big, if it's sold on low or if it's on high, it makes no difference. Will we put our hand near the fire? We won't think twice, oh, the soul only on low, I can let my, 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 my two-year-old child can touch it, nothing's gonna happen to him. Or if it's on high, only if it's on high, he can't touch it. We don't differentiate between low and high when it comes to the flame of the fire. So this is the same thing with sins. That we should never, never differentiate between small and big. Oh, this is only a small sin, let me commit it. Nothing's gonna happen. Because we must always remember that every sin, when we compare it to the being who we are disobeying, is always great. When we are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every sin is considered great. When we, consider, when we, when we compare to the, to, the, to the Almighty and the great Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, people usually don't sin. People, the mainly people, when they don't sin, it's because they don't have the chance to sin. Many people we see, that they don't sin. And then, the reason why they're not sinning is because they don't get the chance to sin. This is why many of us sitting here, we can probably easily testify that Friday, Saturday, Sundays, for the youth especially, are the days in which we sin beyond all, all other days of the week. The reason being is because other days I have homework, I have college, I have work, I play for the team, I do this, I do that, I have classes to attend, I have so many other things I'm, I'm doing and I'm so tired, I'm exhausted, I don't get a chance to sin. And now on the weekend, you have a whole two days to yourself. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, two and a half days to yourself, and this person now he's going to get onto the sinning streak. Sinning streak and he's going to do everything that's in the book. Start right from the laptop, go to the CD player, go to the TV, go to the DVD player. Everything that's in the book is going to do in, that one, in those two or three days. It's because when we have time on our hands, this is when we start sinning. Hassan Basir rahmatullahi for this very reason he would say, that when a person repents from a sin, his sin, his repentance will only be accepted if he learns how to hate the sin just as he had loved it before committing the sin. Hassan Basir used to say, that a person's repentance will only be accepted if he learns how to hate the sin, just as he loved the sin before he committed it. So when a person before he commits the sin, he has his urge to commit the sin. If there was no urge to commit the sin, he wouldn't do it. So for example, he's dying to watch the series of this. He watches the TV program for example. Every week he watches it. Now when he finishes off the TV program, he's waiting for the next week. Okay, next Tuesday the program is coming again. He's waiting, waiting, waiting. Now just as how much choke he has to watch the sin, I mean, to, to, to commit that sin. How much desire he has to commit that sin, his tawbah will only be accepted that once he's committed the sin, when he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the same greed and the same hatred to that sin. That, oh Allah, I hate this sin. Oh Allah, we would like to hate this sin. This sin, this disease, all these wrong things, we want to hate them. This dua is a very beautiful dua. We should all learn it. It's in Surah Qaf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a mention of this, of this in Surah Qaf. The, the dua that we should recite is, Allahumma habba bi al iman. Wa zayyin hu fi Oh Allah, make iman beloved to us. And beautify it in our hearts. Make iman beloved to us. Make us love iman in deen, Islam. Make us love it. Allahumma habib ilayn al iman. Wa zayyin hu fi qulubina. Beautify it in our hearts. Wa karrih ilayn al kufra wal fusuq wal asyan. And make kufr, making partners of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wal fusuq wal asyan. Transgression and, and sinning. Hate it to you. 